I think there is a problem. The, the long tail of underachievement in England and Wales is established, it's there, and it's regrettable. It's something that should be challenged. Given the strong connection between socio-economic background and achievement in our system as it now exists, the more you have children from disadvantaged backgrounds, as it were, the less well the school performs. There were a number of problems in secondary education uh, and the government had to try and find solutions. And uh, the main problem that they focused on in the early years was a small number of uh, urban schools serving disadvantaged communities that had entrenched underperformance. The role of sponsors has been, has been important in supporting schools in their efforts to close the attainment gap. Back in 2000, we weren't too sure what a city academy was. The understanding was that it would be uh, a school run by a sponsor, a charity, or possibly even a business. Naturally, there was quite a bit of suspicion about this back then. And particularly when the first sponsors mooted were companies like Shell and uh, people with uh, uh, dodgy business practices abroad. I'm not saying, you know, uh, naming any names, but other names in the frame made us nervous. And so it was only latterly that the United Learning Trust came forward who had um, sort of over centuries uh, experience in education, albeit in the private sector. In the early years, sponsors invested in the bricks and mortar of a new building that sent an important message. The message being, we value education, we value this community, and here is a, a shining new beacon. The sponsor sounds like they're putting money in. Actually, there's very little money that moves from the sponsor to the school. Um, at the beginning, they were asked to put up two million pounds. Those, those amounts have been waived across, progressively across time but they do become uh, the body which is effectively the employer of the teachers. The teachers are no longer part of a national pay and conditions system. The children in the school are covered not by the general education law in the country developed over a century, I guess, but instead all of their the protections, all of the arrangements around the children are codified in a, a funding agreement that is reached between the sponsor and the Secretary of State for Education, so the top education minister for education in, in the country. There isn't necessarily anymore a, uh, an expectation that there will be a financial role played by sponsors. It is a role in which they share their educational DNA, which is all about the sponsors bringing their successful experience of leadership and, uh, and an upward trajectory in performance to the uh, academies that they sponsor arguing that, um, in fact, uh, it's only the private sector that knows how to be, you know, entrepreneurial and, and so on. Um, I dispute that. I think that many uh, publicly run organisations can display many of those kinds of qualities. So this kind of, um, you know, romancing to some extent of, you know, what is it that the corporate sector have that the public sector don't, um, I think that is a romancing. I think that it isn't as clear cut. I'm afraid it's not a magic wand to say, oh, this school is failing, we'll call it an academy, and then it works. You've, just got, you've, got, you've got to get good leadership, you've got to have money as well, and that's another thing. You've got to pay teachers well and make sure that you pay the leadership well so that you get the best you can, because it's a really, really hard job turning around uh, the prospects of these children. Are you ready to get creative? Yeah. yeah. Put your hand up if you are aiming for a level six today. Brilliant, and keep it up if you are aiming for a level seven. There's no doubt that some of the academies are getting very, very good results. I think we need to look closely at how they're getting those results. The freedoms of admissions that are being given to all these schools means that they, in a sort of market system, will want to have the more advantaged children, so they'll find ways to have them. And I think, in short, you, you'll then have other schools that are in effect the sink schools in every community where the parents who can't pay, can't pray and can't even play the system will end up. Which one are you stuck on, sorry? That one. This one, okay, yeah. so what's the question? Just to go, academies have these figures and these schools have these figures, that just doesn't 
it doesn't work. You've got to go dig much deeper and go, okay, what was the socioeconomic makeup of each school? How did it do? What was the value added on each pupil? And then you can really start to see whether, you know, that school was doing well or not. Governance arrangements of academies are different to the maintained sector and they tend to be smaller, more appointees, and I think probably just less democratic. And the argument of the academies and free schools is, well, it's efficiency and parents want efficiency and they're not so worried about democracy. But I think democracy does, does matter. If we looked at these sponsored academies, the question is, why does a firm get involved in that? And it may not be straightforward profit. What you'd want to be is a kind of player in that sector, to shape policy in that sector, to uh, look at different ways in which, if you're an actor in that sector, uh, you can move the sector in the direction that you might want uh, down the line. So these might be kind of strategic, longer term investments. Sponsors of academies clearly are not uh, taking money out of the education system to, to pay dividends to shareholders. They are facing some reputational risk by taking on a project like this and they are therefore going to want to retain an element of control in order to manage the risk. So they may well populate a governing body with a preponderance of, of their, their friends or employees. I do worry about accountability, that they will be, the private sector will be given too much power and the public will not have enough of a say in how our schools are being run. And although local authority connection to schools, which we can call the old way, had many problems, there is a sense that I can intervene if I'm not happy. There's a sort of chain of uh, accountability, however imperfect. There are always uh, institutions that don't work as well as others. The idea that you that the response to some local authorities not being good is that you get rid of local authorities altogether is an absurd suggestion. It's, it is what the government's doing. The accountability framework for sponsored academies is rigorous and um, involves a number of different uh, bodies. So Ofsted will hold a sponsored academy to account for its performance in exactly the same way as it will hold all schools to account for their performance. Parents will hold a school to account because they won't vote to send their children to the school. And central government will hold sponsors to account for every aspect of the performance of the sponsored academy. Increasingly we see that they're not just local firms or even you know, very large firms, but we often see and increasingly we're seeing uh, these firms uh, located overseas providing services to core business in the education sector. But we aren't easily able to uh, scrutinise them. We can't easily make them um, accountable. They're not particularly transparent. And that's in part because they're operating with a, a commercial logic and um, they invoke commercial law. What this government is doing is really changing the whole nature of our system. I think we'll see the growth of educational chains and I fear, and certainly a lot of people believe, that we will see for-profit providers at the end of that. Positive self-talk to make sure it doesn't, you know, mess up. The government here has an ambition to make every school into an academy or free school. So they're talking about a situation that hasn't been seen, I think, in any OECD country, in any advanced uh, capitalist economy anywhere in the world where every school is running um, without any democratic accountability locally and where these chains of schools have huge influence. I don't think that's been, been seen anywhere else and we are very worried about what the outcomes of that will be. In this kind of model there's a lot of burden on the parent. The burden on the parent is to be a, co a, a consumer of an education for their child. Now if parents are not up to stepping up to the mark um, in terms of um, what the public and the private interests are and um, being sufficiently 
knowledgeable, then maybe we would need a different kind of model where we have perhaps a state beginning to, um, if it was willing to do that, regulatory bodies um, adjudicating uh, much more determinedly in the interests of the public. What do you think? They've brought uh, a, a sense of focus on the outcomes for the children and the relevance of the outcomes to the life that the children are working towards once they leave school. In a sense, the private sector will do what the private sector does well, which is create kind of companies rather than communities. <laughs>